Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Um, I thought I would start like a new kind of series on this channel. Something called maybe like the Nostalgia series or something like that. I don't know. It's still in the beginning stages. I don't know if that'll make it to the title of this video or not, but um, I'm playing around with it. The idea behind it is sort of like, as you know, I'm a huge comic book fan and I'm also now a professional comic book artist. So I thought it'd be kind of cool if I could revisit some of my favorite comic books and comic series and the artists who drew those books when I was a kid and um, kind of revisit them as an adult and maybe pick a character from one of those books and draw them now. I don't know, maybe the idea sounds better in my head than it will playing out in video form, but um, it's an experiment. Let's see how it goes. Hopefully you don't mind watching and uh, I think either way it'll be kind of fun. But when I think about some of my favorite childhood comics, I can't help but think about the image era. If you're in and around my age and you were into comics growing up, you were definitely familiar with image comics. They were everywhere and they were very influential on a lot of like professionals nowadays who are working. I think whether that image comic style shows through in your work or not, um, we all kind of have some sort of nostalgic feeling towards that era and those artists. And when I think about old school image comics, my favorite series would definitely have been Gen 13. Gen 13 was a series created by Jim Lee, J. Scott Campbell, uh, Alex Garner, and Brandon Choi. J. Scott Campbell's work is, uh, it's really awesome. I've been a fan of it ever since I first saw it when I was a kid. And um, the guy could just really draw. He just knows how to draw really well. And he also has some really interesting influences that show through in his work, like Disney animation and old Mad Magazine comic book artists. It's kind of like the blending of a lot of different kinds of uh, art styles. And he made, he made it into something that's very much his own. And um, he could just draw really well. So it creates pretty much an awesome comic book artist. And when I was a kid and I first saw this stuff, I was like blown away by it. So it's kind of cool and interesting to revisit it now as an adult. Anyway, for this nostalgia series, I thought a good place to start would be with Gen 13. I still have my original Gen 13 issues drawn by J. Scott Campbell. Um, they're in their original plastic board covers and all that. I'm a super nerd, I know. But I thought for this video, we could maybe start off by just like flipping through some of my favorite issues. We could look at some of my favorite panels, scenes, covers, all that. And um, if you're not familiar with Gen 13 and J. Scott Campbell's work, this will hopefully be a really cool introduction for you to see some of that work. And if you are familiar with it, maybe it could be nostalgic, kind of like it is for me. And then after we flip through some of these comics, I thought I would take a character from Gen 13 and then draw them as I draw today and kind of film the experience. Before we get into the drawing though, let's take a look at some of the art inside these awesome comics. All right, so here's just a small sample of my Gen 13 collection over here. See, there's some of my favorite issues and covers. And um, yeah, just look at a cover like that. So cool. I think one of the really great things about like this series and just like this era in comics was just how everything was working together so smoothly. Like J. Scott Campbell's art just really was beautiful, but then it was enhanced by Alex Garner's inks, which were just fit perfectly for his penciling style. And then the colors just did such an awesome job. Like it was strong, it kind of popped off the shelf, but it was nothing like too crazy or flashy. And then just that iconic logo, just the overall design, everything just kind of seemed to work really, really well. I think it was that collaborative effect that really contributed to like, um, just the overall aesthetic of this look and how effective it was. Here's another awesome cover. This is one of my favorites. So great. It's like grunge and free fall getting chased through the streets of what was probably San Diego. And it was kind of cool how they put, J. Scott Campbell put in like Garner's Bar and Grill in reference to Alex Garner. There's always these little like Easter eggs that he would throw into his art. But that's just such a cool cover. Crazy, I mean, you know, if you were like a kid in the, whenever this was, 96, 97, 
um, you were definitely buying this issue. That would just like jump right off the shelves. So let's jump inside and take a look at some of the some of this interior artwork. Uh, the really cool thing about Gen 13 and J. Scott Campbell's work was that he would draw the covers and they were so amazing. And then you would open it up hoping that like the art style was gonna be as great as the covers. And they totally were, or if not even better. So that was some of the appeal of it. Like the artwork was just so nice and um, so nice consistently throughout the book. One of the things that I really notice now about his work is just how strong his character design was. Like every character in this, uh, it was, you know, it was a team book, but every character has their own sense of personality and design. They all, um, you know, work as individuals together. And just the way he draws like face, faces, facial expressions, hair, different clothing, all that stuff is so important in terms of like making these characters come to life. Look at those faces, so cool. You know, J. Scott Campbell was definitely a part of that whole image comics style. You know, he had all the trappings of the image comic style, which was like the the cross hatching, um, the, uh, the dynamic page layout, all that stuff. But his work always stood out because there was something different about it. It was, um, a little bit more like playful than um, some of the traditional image comic artists. Um, there was something about it that didn't take itself super seriously. There was like a humorous kind of quality to it. Um, and I think that really contributed to just the overall tone of this book. You know, it's a, it's a superhero book starring a bunch of like teenage superheroes. So uh, it's supposed to feel very much like uh, alive and exciting and um, it didn't take itself too seriously which I thought was really cool another thing about J. Scott Campbell's work that I think gets overlooked is that um, I don't know I consider him to be like a really good visual storyteller um, it had like I mentioned it had a lot of those I guess image comic tropes in terms of page layouts you know there was like panels falling off of the page um, panels like kind of on top of each other, diagonal panels like this, but everything was always really clear. Didn't ever feel like he sacrificed the clarity of story just so that he could make a cool looking page design. Um, and I, I think, I think that's something that kind of gets overlooked in his work. So great. There's such like a, um, like an animation kind of feel to his work too. It really just like jumps off the page. It kind of feels, you could definitely see some of his like Disney animation influences show through. So great. I mean, just look at like a simple panel like that, like the hair, it's really stylized and the hands are really stylized. I feel like he really understands the anatomy of hands and therefore he's able to exaggerate them. And Definitely what he's doing here with hair, he's just like simplifying it into these clumps and really playing with like the lighting. Just makes it like a really attractive looking drawing and something that you just want to look at. Really dynamic image over there. That's really fun. Whoa. Great facial expressions. Now this was a big issue, I remember. So obviously it's called Gen 13, and when the comic hit issue 13, it actually split it up into three different issues. So it was 13A, 13B, and 13C. 13A was really cool because it obviously kicked it off, and each issue was only, I think, 13 pages too. It was a really uh, small, like pamphlet-sized issue. and. Um, the premise was that in this storyline, Grunge, one of the characters in the group, um, he somehow falls into some sort of like dream state. I think he gets like sick. He gets like food poisoning or something like that. And um, he passes out. And um, before he does, though, it's like this mall scene. There, He's on the hunt for this like limited edition foil comic or something like that. And uh, he doesn't get the comic. And then he gets sick and he passes out. And in his dream state, he goes into some sort of like search for this 
like magical search for this comic. And um, he ends up, he wakes up in Riverdale, of all places. And um, I, at the time that I was really into Gen 13, I was also really into Archie comics as well. So for me, this was like two worlds colliding in the most awesome way possible. <laughs> but um, it was really cool to see J. Scott Campbell like stretch here stylistically. Um, you could see how he's able to come in and out of different styles. Uh, he drew in that like classic kind of Dandy Carlo Archie style, but some of his own rendering also kind of showed through the way he drew hands. Like that's not really like Archie way of drawing hands. It's a J. Scott Campbell way of drawing hands. So it was a really nice blending of the two. And then, um, you know, grunge was always consistently drawn throughout in the same way. So, um, I guess 11 year old me was like freaking out when I saw this, I thought it was so cool. <laughs> And in the rest of this three-part, thirteen uh, issue thirteen, he meets up with various um, different characters of, of that time, like Hellboy, Spawn, um, Monkey Man, and O'Brien, all different uh, like popular comic characters of the time. So it was actually a really cool, fun series. And check this out in the back. Shout out to Archie Comics. I actually ordered all of these. <laughs> I still have all these. This is like a collection of uh, Archie in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, oh, this was the 40s, actually. I have that one, too. Um, yeah, really cool stuff. I love these old comics because you get to see, like, the old ads. I don't think you could... You can't, like, order comics from the back of comics anymore, probably. I guess you just do that online. Uh, so I don't want to go too long. I could look at Gen 13 issues for the next couple of hours, probably, but uh, this video will kind of get out of hand. So hopefully uh, this gave you a, a cool look into um, some of these comics. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed flipping through some of those comics with me. Uh, that was a lot of fun. It was really cool to revisit some of those issues and, and look at some of that awesome artwork. Um, now it's time to draw. I pick, as the character from Gen 13, I pick um, Freefall. Roxy Spaulding was her full name. Uh, she was one of my favorite characters in Gen 13, and I thought it'd be cool to kind of like reinterpret how I would draw her. Um, so I recorded some of a time lapse of the footage of me drawing, as much of it as I could. Um, I approached it like I approach pretty much all of my traditional black and white ink drawings. Um, I actually started with a really, really small thumbnail that I just worked out the pose and um, the composition and kind of just the, the feel that I wanted to have of the overall drawing. I kind of envisioned this drawing as sort of like maybe like a con sketch or a commission or maybe what it would have been like in the back of like an image comic, like a pinup full page pinup in the back of like an old Gen 13 issue or something like that. That's kind of what I was thinking. It's just a black and white ink drawing, so I tried to make it as interesting as I could uh, using just black and white. Um, my style nowadays definitely differs in many ways from J. Scott Campbell's work, but I can totally see how um, his work influenced mine in terms of uh, facial expression stuff. I always loved the way he drew and rendered hair. Um, I, I definitely take a lot from that for sure. Um, where it differs is I'm probably more heavy handed with like the brush. I think his work is much more of like a pen nib style when it comes to inking. And with my work, it's much more brush oriented, a little bit more graphic with um, the use of larger black areas. So it's kind of cool to see where his inspiration kind of like starts and ends as it relates to my work. This was a fun piece to work on. It was very actually nostalgic. Uh, it's cool to revisit a character like this and think about how I might draw them now um, as a comic book artist. And um, man, it would be so cool to draw like a, a short Gen 13 comic story or something like that. I know Gen 13 hasn't been on the market in a really long time, but um, if Image just ever decides to bring it back, hit me up. <laughs> So anyway, I hope you enjoy some of the time-lapse footage of this drawing, and I hope you enjoyed this whole like video idea. Um, I'm gonna try to do more of these. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you like this sort of thing, and if you have any recommendations for me to uh, what comic series and what comic character maybe I should tackle next. 
Obviously, I want it to be something that has some sort of uh, nostalgia quality for me. But when I was growing up, I was into a lot of different comics and superheroes and artists and all that. So um, maybe we're on the same page with some of them. So I'd love to hear some of your suggestions. And I look forward to making some more videos like this. So um, as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Thank you.